Welcome to uh, Back to School Ergonomics for Kids. Uh, my name is John Sinkay. I am a physical therapist and the biomechanics coordinator at Hospital for Special Surgery. With us tonight is also Laura Menino, who is an uh, PEDS occupational therapist at the hospital. Uh, my thanks to uh, Claudia Zerlini for setting all this up for us and inviting us. Uh, we are going to show you today uh, ergonomics for kids uh, at home. A lot of us uh, with the new environment that we are in, we are seeing uh, and hearing a lot of requests for information to know that our children are safe and that everything that they're doing at home is set up appropriately in terms of uh, school virtual learning. So we're gonna take you through a basic setup of how everything should be. And yeah, I don't wanna share that, sorry. There we go. Okay, so when we're talking about ergonomics. We're basically talking about fitting a task to fit a person and not letting the person fit themselves to the task. So in this case, it's having the schoolwork at our table fit to the student. So how do we do that? All right, a lot of our uh, students are working on computers virtually. So they're sitting at a desk or perhaps kitchen table and they're working and we know a lot of the kids are all sitting like this at the table with their bad posture and they're looking down at their screen and you know it, I remember my mom always telling me sit up straight and you know watch your posture and you know occasionally the ruler comes out and whacks you but you know our kids are now susceptible to this and you know we didn't realize how good we had it in our offices and the kids probably didn't realize how good they had it at school until now they're home and they're working in the room or they're in the kitchen and they're trying to work and they're really not comfortable. And maybe they're already starting to voice that complaint. to you. So how do we fix it? All right. The first thing you want to do really when the child is sitting at the, at the desk or at the table, wherever they're at, look at how they're sitting. Okay. Most tables we can't adjust. So we have to adjust everything else around that. For me, that starts with the chair. So I'm sitting on a regular kitchen chair here and you can see my elbows are a little more than 90 degrees. I really want my keyboard to be right here. So how do I do that? Well, quite simply, I'm just gonna take a pillow and I'm gonna sit on it. And now all of a sudden I've got that 90 degrees. So now I'm a little higher. Okay, it's also quite comfortable. But now you can also see my back, it's not really into the chair and I would probably like to slouch and most kids do this too and quite frankly, we all do this well. So how do I fix that? Well, I'm just gonna take another pillow and I'm gonna put that behind me. And now all of a sudden I've got good back support and I'm sitting up straight. Hopefully the pillow's not too thick that the child feels like they're being pushed out of the chair because that would be bad. You can kind of see my legs are angled down and that's what I'm looking for. If the person is a little taller and their feet touch the floor, terrific. If not, grab some kind of footstool or maybe use some books, put them on the floor so the child's feet are in contact with it and that's gonna let their legs relax and gonna take a lot of strain off their back, all right? Next, we wanna be sure that everything is directly in front of them, okay? That they're not working to the side and they're twisting, because that's not good for their back, all right? But a common thing we also see and hear a lot is that they're always looking down at the screen with their head, or they're looking down at their phones. So we can do one of two things. We can either raise this up. So I would grab some books, and what I'm looking for is for the top of my screen here to be eye level. And when that's eye level, I know I'm in a good position here, but here's the problem, the keyboard's up here. You would need a second keyboard to wire into your laptop, or the, the student would need one, and then they could work from here. And now you've got that 90 degree angle, 
okay? And they're comfortable and they've got good posture and position and everything's in front of them and it's about arm's length away. And they're in a good position. You're setting them up for success with good posture, okay? If you don't have the keyboard, not a problem. You don't need the books necessarily, but you should angle the screen so they can still use their eyes to look down at the screen and not their head. All right. Now, fortunately for us, most students, their classes virtually are probably about 40 to 45 minutes, which is perfect because after the class is over, the students should get up. They should get up and move. They should walk around, they should get something to eat or drink. Maybe they go to the bathroom. Maybe they do a couple exercises and stretch, whatever it is, as long as they get moving. And later on, Lauren is gonna show you some exercises that anyone can do pretty much anywhere, all right? So what if we're not working at the kitchen table? What if we're not working at a desk? Is there anywhere else they could work? Well, yeah, if they wanna sit maybe in bed or on a different chair, we can do that. So bear with me for a second as we move. So imagine, now the child says, well, what if I want to take one class and I just want to sit in bed? Okay. Well, imagine for a second my couch here is the bed. And hey, maybe they want to sit on the couch. Same rules apply. Elbows about 90 degrees. Everything's in front of me. You see my legs are kind of straight. To make myself more comfortable, I'm going to take a pillow and put that under my knees. So now my knees are slightly bent, and that's going to make me very comfortable. And I've got a lot of pillows behind me to support me. Maybe I just need one more. Because okay. again, posture is everything. Everything starts with good posture, and most injuries start with bad posture. So here I am. Now I'm sitting. I'm comfortable. And again, it's only going to be for one class. So if it's 40, 45 minutes, make them comfortable. Their legs are supported. Maybe they're just sitting on the couch with their feet down. Again, pillows under them. You can see how this couch, I sink. So maybe I need a pillow to sit on and well, that's a little bit better. Okay. And again, my feet need to be in contact with the floor. If they're not, they need to put their feet up, maybe on a table, maybe on an ottoman, a footstool. Maybe you have some pillows, whatever you have around the house. You have all of these tools that you don't know exist use them. Get creative. Think outside the box because that's what we need to do now. We need to get creative with some of our solutions and figure out what makes us feel better while we're working and what doesn't. And then we know to stay away from what doesn't. All right. So could the students sit in a beanbag chair? Yeah, they could. You know, again, as long as they're comfortable and everything is set up appropriately in front of them, they can absolutely do that, okay? Stools, you know, maybe at a counter, yes, but they don't want to be leaning over. We don't, we want them to be sitting up straight with good posture. These prolonged positions, these repetitive positions are what leads to injury, okay? So um, if you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat. Happy to answer them. If we don't answer them by the end of the session, we will email you the answers. This is also being taped. So if you want to view it again, a link will be sent out to you, okay? Next, we're gonna talk about taking breaks and exercises. So Lauren is going to uh, jump in here and lead you through some demonstrations. Hi, all. Um, thank you, John, that was great. I think what we'll talk about from a pediatrics perspective is just going through um, some other alternatives if you do have more child-sized furniture or a small, smaller child that it might be a little hard to modify for. Um, and then we'll go through some exercises and some stretches and um, 
some other activities that are certainly from a pediatric realm that support um, good posture and strength that you can do at home without any equipment. Um, and then we'll go through kind of what are some concerns, anything that you might want to take a look at or watch out for that may indicate your child is uncomfortable or they may need further follow up. Um, so taking a look at the desk setup, I tried to follow John's instructions and really mimic um, that setup with maybe something a little bit smaller, more child size. There are certainly plenty of options. Um, you may have a desk that you know, you've kind of taken a look at, for your child, you may have um, a smaller table and chair set up. I think the most important thing, as John highlighted, is that no matter where they are, you're looking at their posture, you're looking at um, you know, starting with the sitting position, looking to the feet on the floor, and making sure that they are really set up for success at the desk. Um, if you want to provide something for their feet, there's also options like a small cushion or something that's a little bit more um, wobbly or maybe provide some texture that still keeps them in that feet on the floor position, but maybe gives them a little bit of extra movement um, that may help them to kind of focus on what they're doing without giving them so much wobble in their seat, but just giving a little movement down below. Um, I have a couple examples of a few of the chairs that we have here. So we have this nice red cube chair and a smaller activity chair that are definitely pediatric specific. Um, certainly for a much smaller child who may be doing just, you know, a half an hour or 30 minute session of class. Um, so just some other options that you know, you, even if you have smaller furniture for your child, don't assume that it just fits them from the start. Take a look at and kind of go through the principles again to make sure they're in a good seating position, their feet are on the floor comfortably, um, their arms and hands are set up for success at the desktop with all of their things that they need right in front of them. All right. Um, so if we're going to move on from here, um, let's talk about some other activities you can incorporate into your child's day just as important as setting them up for success while seated and participating in class is what you can help them to do during the breaks between class, before school, after school. Um, if your child is going to be seated, seated for 20, 30, 45 minutes at a time, getting up and taking those movement breaks are a really great thing for their strength, for their posture, their development, um, and also for their growing sensory system. So activities like um, planning movement breaks that incorporate exercise, jumping jacks, wall push-ups, um, yoga poses like bird dog and plank, um, even a child's pose are a great way to incorporate little movement activities that you can do in between each class just to give them a different um, movement thing versus just standing up to take a walk. And I've had parents who have made it a list and the kid gets to check off the ones they want. Maybe it's on a wheel that you spin and you pick a movement activity between classes. Um, maybe it's a small exercise routine that you do, um, maybe as an older child that wouldn't necessarily think of as appropriate for something a little bit more playful like the wheel. Um, so I'll go through some of those exercises, some stretches that you can do, uh, and then we'll come back around and I'll show you one or two more activities that you can do to support your child's growth and postural development um, outside of schoolwork. All right. So I'm going to head over to my chair that is kind of a relatively good setup for myself. And you as adults can do this. You can do this with your children. Your child can do it. Um, and it can be something that they take the initiative and responsibility to be able to do throughout the day um, as they feel comfortable and you can encourage during those small rest times. So while you're sitting in the chair with good posture, you wanna make sure that you're sitting up straight right in the middle. You can start by kind of rolling forward, exaggerating that forward flexed position and then rolling slowly back up to sit up as nice and tall as you can. Stretching the arms behind and coming back to the middle. You can cross your arms and twist from your upper body to each side as a stretch. And you can slowly do some gentle neck stretches, like turning your nose towards one shoulder and the other, or bringing one ear to your shoulder and the other. 
all of these movements should be nice and slow. They should be more of a stretch or a gentle movement. You can encourage your child to take a deep breath as they do each one, um, but slow and steady for these stretches at least. There um, are one or two other exercises that are great things to do that you can do standing. So one of them, you can stand, you can find a wall, you can stand with your back at the chair, just to give you a sense of grounding. Um, you're gonna stand up nice and tall, encourage your child to bend their knees a little bit, roll their shoulders back, and then you're going to bring your arms up, out to the side, overhead, and focus on pulling them back down into your side. If you do this standing at a wall, you can think about, have your child think about keeping their whole body, the, the, their tush and their shoulders touching the wall, and that will give a really nice stretch and help to activate those back muscles. One of our physicians here actually um, shared with us that she has taught some of her children as a way to kind of stretch and exercise to walk in what we call the anatomical position. Um, so with hands pointed forward, toes pointed forward, um, it really helps you rotate the shoulder blades back and the shoulders down and helps activate those postural muscles. So just a very quick stretch and something that your child can do um, and you can do with just a little bit of practice. Like I said before, you can incorporate more big movement activities, um, yoga poses, you can do push-ups at the wall. Um, that will, those will be ex exercises that your child can do that you can incorporate across their lifespan. Some fun pediatric activities that we have incorporated to help um, our kids who come here to work on strength and coordination um, include those yoga poses, include things like wall push-ups, um, but other ways that you can kind of play and help them to do work is by setting them up in a different position for things that aren't school. So maybe you're gonna do an art project and you're gonna have them lie on their belly on the floor. That's activating these posterior back postural muscles to help them push up. Um, you can help have them tape something underneath a table, um, a, a coffee table that they have to lie on their back and color underneath or doing art projects or things set up vertically. So taping a piece of paper to the wall. Those are all really great ways to help activate the muscles of the chest and the back that help support good posture. All right. So with all of these great tips and strategies to set up, all the ways to incorporate movement breaks throughout the day, what do you do if your child starts to complain or you notice that something seems a little off? Um, we are all spending more time with our heads down, our eyes down, um, gazing at screens of all types. And I think that, you know, virtual learning and Zoom, it's really important to pay attention to these ergonomics to look out for muscle aches and pains, strains and joint stiffness, um, flexibility and range of motion. So setting your child up for success is really so important. So kids' bodies are meant to be active, they're meant to be mobile. If you notice that your child starts to complain about aches or pains um, after their virtual day, first, take a look at their posture and workstation and make adjustments as we've talked about. Um, make stations more comfortable, ergonomically efficient, build in movement and stretching breaks, and then vary positions throughout the day so that maybe you set them up at the table and then let's give them a couple of those other options so that they get a chance to change their position. Um, and then incorporate some of those postural exercises, stretching and strengthening. If your child continues to complain of aches or pains, um, if it interrupts their sleep or you notice something, their posture looks off, maybe their head tilts to one side or they are hiking one shoulder over the other, um, it's always a good idea to follow up with a pediatrician. Um, they can make recommendations for further assessment for physical therapy or maybe an orthopedist recommendation if warranted. Um, good things that you can do, even when you're sitting in the best position, your postural muscles are still working. So let your child rest and just lie down on the floor for a minute. It's a really nice way to kind of let everything relax and have those muscles relax too. Um, you can give them a little bit of a massage, just something gentle, um, and you can even incorporate a little bit of ice if they really are uncomfortable. I think what we're looking for to define should I take a further look at this? Um, is it something I should be concerned about? Is 
once they change their position, once you do some stretches, does that pain go away or decrease? Um, if they're working throughout the day and then they have some pain and you do some of these things and it gets better, I think that's the point where you can comfortably say, let's make the adjustments, let's try these things and hope that their pain continues to go away from that. Um, if it's something that lingers or interferes with their daily routines, including sleep, then I think it's certainly time to follow up. All right, um, I think that that kind of summarizes as much as we can cover. We're going to share the resources and a full page of stretching if you'd like to print them out and tack them up on your wall so your kids can follow along or try them at home. Um, and you'll have this video to refer back to for some ideas and suggestions. Thanks, Lauren. So uh, if anyone has questions at this time, please feel free to enter them into the chat. Again, uh, many thanks to everyone for coming and uh, spending some time with us this evening. Uh, we highlighted a lot of stuff. We gave you a lot of information here. So again, this is being taped. There will be a link that will be sent out. Uh, if you have other questions, you can reach us at hss.edu. Okay. Um, in summary, again, remember, ergonomics is about fitting the task to the person. Okay, a lot of us just, you sit down, the student will sit down at the, at the desk, grab their books, grab their laptop, and they'll just start working without thinking of setting anything up. So we have to help them, again, set them up for success, whether it's a pillow under them or behind them or a footstool, something to support their legs, to support their back, some exercises that can uh, help them stretch and stay loose, or just to simply get up and move around throughout the day most important thing is is that they're moving because our motto is how you move is why we're here and we love to see everybody out there and not really in the clinic all right but it's not about the one day it's every day start forming good habits with good posture and that will lead them to success down the road it won't be one day where they're just looking down at their phone and all of a sudden their neck hurts or their back hurts. It's doing this over and over and over again, whether they're sitting with good position or they're sitting with bad position. If they're good, we'll never see them. They'll just wave and keep going. If they're in a bad position, unfortunately, we'd probably see them sooner rather than later. So it's time over and over again that adds up to the injury. Okay. So uh, one question has come in, do standing desks provide any advantage over sitting? Good question. Yes and no. It's a very nice alternative. Uh, I would, if I had the opportunity to stand, I would stand for about 15, 20 minutes. And I would definitely have some kind of footstool there. So I could put one foot up and one foot down and adjust my position. But again, the same rules apply in sitting that they do in standing. That your elbows have to be at that 90 degree angle and the screen has to be right here at eye level and everything's gotta be in front of you and within arm's reach, okay? If the table is up here and they're working, that's, that's no good. So good question. It's a very good alternative. If the student is a little shorter in stature and the counter, uh, or there's, if there's an island and they want to work there for 15 minutes, that's fine. Also think about the surface they're standing on. You know, wood floors, uh, tiles, kind of hard and unforgiving. So if they're just standing in socks, they may be uncomfortable. They may want to put on sneakers. Maybe if you have an anti-fatigue mat on the floor, that would definitely help them feel comfortable. Um, and again, not sitting too long, not standing too long and constantly moving. John, also just to add in from a, from a childhood perspective, um, just taking into account that depending on what age your child is, they may not necessarily say I'm uncomfortable or this feels like an awkward position. So take the time to kind of look out, are they getting a little fidgety? Um, should you maybe encourage them to change positions and give them that cue so they start to learn, um, you know, I'm having trouble focusing or I'm getting a little antsy um, to kind of incorporate those movement breaks or those changes in position um, 
for things that you may, from having this knowledge now, be able to see in their posture and take a look at, you know, maybe they are really hunching their shoulders or maybe they're standing on an unforgiving surface. How can I change their position and their posture to keep them in a good place, um, but help them to kind of refocus their energy? Good, very good point. A lot of the uh, students, kids will, will not say anything. So it's our job to kind of probe and ask them over and over again repeatedly, all right? Another question, what resource link is available for kids exercise during the break? Uh, we have a exercise sheet. Uh, the exercises that Lauren talked about, uh, we will have uh, printed out and uh, it will be available on a link that we can send to everyone here. So good question, no problem there. Uh, Jalen, are yoga balls good alternatives to a desk chair? Is it better to use them all day or just for parts of the day? Uh, honestly, I am not a big fan of yoga balls. Uh, I do see it as an alternative for, for some people. Uh, we've had a couple of staff members use them uh, when they were actually pregnant, just to give them a little relief. I know a lot of people say, well, if I'm sitting on a BOSU ball or a yoga ball, I can work my core while I'm working. Yeah, but are you really concentrating on your work? Would the student be concentrating on the class? Uh, you know, or are they not paying attention and all of a sudden they whoop, slide right off and they fall on the floor? I'm always going to err on the side of safety. So yoga balls, unless you can wedge it with a chair behind you against the wall and it doesn't move, Okay, but again, same mechanics apply. Your, your elbows are still at 90 degrees and your feet are in contact with the floor and everything's in front of you and that screen is eye level. So, good questions. If there are no other questions. Uh, again, John, it looks like there's one more question. Oh, okay. Did I not see it? How do you get children to stop bending their head down toward or over a device? Does the solution mainly involve posi the positioning of the device? Uh, yes, it, it does mainly involve positioning of the device uh, and it's constant uh, re repetition of reinforcing that where they're instead of holding the phone and they're looking straight down, they can hold it with their elbow at 90 degrees and then use their eyes again to look down versus bending their head. Um, very good question, very common question that we're hearing more and more, not just from children, but also from adults as well. That again, the repetitiveness of them constantly looking down over time is now catching up with them. And now they're like, hmm, I have this pain or I feel something going down my arm, what is that? So. It starts with good posture, being in this neutral position, sitting straight, keeping everything in front of you. And some people say, well, how do I know what neutral is? So if you slouch in your, in your seat and then you sit all the way up straight like you're in the army, find the middle point between these two positions and that's your neutral point. And that's how you practice over and over again every day for two to three weeks until your postural muscles adapt to this position. Slouch, arch, middle. And then after a few weeks, your muscles will adapt to this. And if you start to slouch or look down, you'll feel it. Your body will talk. The child's body will talk and tell them. And that's when you have to say to them, wait, stop, look up, watch your position. Remember, find neutral. Okay. But we have to Unfortunately, we just have to hammer it home over and over and over again. Keep it in front of you. Keep it eye level. Stop bending. Okay. For a child too, I think this is especially important, especially for the younger kids. It's very hard to separate um, moving your eyes without moving your head. So for especially the younger kids who are doing more screen time than they necessarily may have a year ago or two years ago, um, reinforcing those those good movement patterns and that good positioning and feeling where neutral is um, they 
learn to find that and then they get to develop these strong muscles back here. The kids who repetitively are over here, um, these muscles kind of stretch out and tend to get weak or don't get quite as strong. So putting your younger kids, especially who are doing more screen time than they would in that upright position so they're not looking down is really, really important for kids of all ages, but especially those young kids now. Well said. Uh, Shank, are adjustable ergonomic tables tilted good for posture alignment? Uh, good question. Most of the ergonomic tables that I see are adjustable in height. They come up and down. Uh, I haven't seen a lot that have tilted, but definitely uh, if you have more than one kid at home, having a ergonomic table that adjusts in height is fabulous. Most of them have a panel on the side with settings like one, two, three, four. So for one child, you could set one and two for sit stand. And for the second child, three, four for sit stand. And again, same rules, elbows 90 degrees, screen eye level, feet on the floor, hits S1 to set it. And then standing, same thing, screen eye level, elbows 90 degrees. When you're there, hit S2. So then the child, when they come, I'm going to sit, boom, they hold one, it goes down to sitting. They want to stand, they push two and it goes to standing the same time, same place every time. So yes, it is a good alternative. Maybe they do it for one class sitting and then half a class, it's standing up and then they sit back down. Uh, an anonymous question. Do you prefer a student to sit at a table or an island while they work in class or homework? I have no preference as long as they are comfortable, as long as they are sitting with good posture. And that, again, we set them up for success that if they're sitting on an island and a stool that's high, that there's a bar there that they can rest their feet. And again, that they're sitting up and they're not hunching over the table. They're sitting at a desk or kitchen table, sitting straight, pillow behind them, pillow under them, feet supported, work in front of them, and that they take breaks, you know, every 30 to 40 minutes and they just stop and do an exercise or a stretch. Or like Lauren said, they change a position and maybe they put something up on the wall and they're writing something where they lay down and they tape it to the, under the coffee table and they work that way. So... Uh, I have no preference as long as they are comfortable. So excellent questions. Thank you everyone again so much. Uh, again, if you have any other questions, feel free to email us and contact us at hss.edu. Many thanks to Claudia Zerlini and to Lauren for uh, spending time with us and uh, for Claudia for setting everything up. Thank you everyone. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you again next time.